So, what is the octet rule real quick? Octet rule. Have a elective Yes, every atom wants to have a full outer shell. So there's two ways you can do it, at least for sodium, right? So for sodium, it can either try to gain seven electrons or lose this one. What's easier? Lose one. To lose one. And for fluorine, it has seven in the outer shell, right? So how many more does it need? One. One. So what's easier, to lose a seven or gain one? Gain one. So what's going to happen is this electron, this electron is going to jump from here and go over here. So now this whole shell is gone, because there's no more electrons in the shell, right? But now that we've lost the electron, what is the charge here? Minus, plus one. Plus one, because it used to be neutral, you lost a negative, so now this is, I'm going to lose a different charge. So now this is a plus one charge. And what charge is this? Because it gained one. It's a minus one. So what happened? There was a transfer of electrons. But wait a minute, why is there a bond though? If I give you something, there's a transfer. Why is there a bond? What is keeping it together? You have a problem? So why would a bond form? Okay, the electron was flowing down the electron. Because of the charges. The bond is there just like a magnet. Positive attracts negative, right? So the bond is there because of the charges. Got it? Now, is this a strong bond or a weak bond? What do you guys think? Would this be strong or weak? Strong. Mm -hmm. Strong. It's actually weak. Why? The reason why it's weak is why is sodium into fluorine? Why, why the bond? Because it has a negative. What if a bigger negative comes? What do you think sodium is going to do? He's going to leave it. Fluorine, why does fluorine like sodium? Because it's positive. So let's just say a bigger positive comes here. Why, why is he going to still going to stick to sodium? There's no reason. He might as well just stick to this now and then break the bond here. Does that make sense? So as soon as something... you understand this? Okay, fluorine is negative, right? And so it's with sodium, why? Because it's positive. What is, so this is plus one, right? What's up? Okay. So what if a stronger positive comes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Basically, he doesn't really like sodium, he just likes his positive. So as soon as there's something else with a bigger positive, he'll break the bond. So this is what? This is a weak bond. Now here's the thing. Here's where it gets kind of interesting. You want to see where it gets interesting, Chaz? Bro. Right here, we just got the interesting part. Oh, okay. Yeah, dude, we're doing it. Bob. We're doing it. <laughs> the study spot. Now we're doing it. <laughs> okay, here's a, okay, now, if it has a weak bond, what would you predict, predict the melting point and boiling point? Would it be high or low? No. Would it be easy to break this bond? Yeah. 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 So it should take a small amount of heat. So you'd expect the boiling point and melting point to be low. But in reality, when scientists started doing experiments, you know what they found? It's actually high. Why is it high? Isn't that puzzling? That just blow your mind? It's just like... Why, is it Why would the boiling point and melting point be high? Because it's a weak bond. Right? So, here's the reason. I'm going to draw... I'll draw this. Why do you guys still wear the doorbell? I don't know. You don't. I don't know. Well, you don't. That's what you should require. I don't think you know. Jazz, I heard you got it. I just need you to throw it at him. Jazz, I heard you got it. 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 Oh, Chaz, Chaz, what do you say? Hey, Chaz, over there so you can do the report. Creepy, you know that Chaz got caught. Do I just start again? No, 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 I'm not so sorry. It's just so Chaz, like, you will... It's fine, I'm going to cut it out. Alright. I'll have to become a producer. You have to hire someone to do two videos. Alright, so, look, it's a weak bond, right? So why does it have a... So we know this for a fact, we did. It has a high boiling point and melting point. Why? Here's the thing. Sodium and fluorine, right? They have a bond with each other. You guys agree? But 
what stopping sodium would bond you with another more fluorines? No, it's because it just feels positive. It's not like it's one electron oh, it's because of its overall positivity or negativity. And not only that, but you can also go, so let's just make a straight line, right? It can also go behind the board, it's 3D, right? And it can go in front of the board. And then you know what? Then you can have sodium here. And then sodium there. And then a fluorine here. Oh, it's hard to see. Yes, so hard this to is see. called the lattice structure. Oh. oh, you see light bulbs everywhere. <laughs> you guys got it? So the lattice structure is why you can, uh, why you have a high melting point boiling point. I never understood yeah, until now. I did not know what that was. So this is the lattice structure. So, okay, there's a few different types of lattice structure. Uh, you can have a hexagonal one, you can have uh, a cubic one, all these things. But overall, it has a lattice structure. So add that as the fourth point. Lattice structure. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now I'm just going to comment about it. Okay. Oh, uh, one other point. Can this uh, reaction occur between a negative and a negative? No. Can it occur, can it occur between a positive and a positive? No. What does it have to be? Positive, positive and a negative. So it stays together. Yeah, so it stays together because they have an opposite charge. Now, where do we find... Okay, here's the periodic table, right? Here's the periodic table, right? And this is your staircase. Where are all the negatives? Right here. Remember, these are all your negatives. These are all the... Non-metals, right? Mm -hmm. And where are your positives? Over here. These are all your positives. These are all your metals. So, an ionic bond forms between what? Metals and non-metals. If you want to make it, if you want to make it easy for yourself, pluses and minuses. Got it? Wait, which ones are pluses? Yeah. Metals. Now, can transition metals form ionic bonds? Yeah, because they're plus two. Got it? So, metals and non-metals. Form ionic bonds. Got it? Add that as point number five. And just memorize these points, literally. Just memorize these. It's probably going to be related to this. Now, what about covalent bonds? Okay? Uh, let's look at something called oxygen, right? O2. Right? What is the valence uh, electrons on oxygen? Six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, do you guys remember electronegativity? What's the definition? It's the affinity for electrons. Good. It's how hard. What I think of it is muscle. How strong is the uh, atom? The stronger the atom, the stronger it can pull on electrons. Now, let me draw another, another pair of tables again. So on the periodic table, what, where do you have the uh, highest electron activity? What is the strongest uh, electron activity atom here? Do you guys know? Francium. Francium is the weakest atom. Fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative. Can anyone take an electron away from fluorine? No. There's no one that can take an electron from fluorine. Why? Because it's the most electronegative. Does that make sense? Now. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Now. <clears throat> As you get closer to fluorine, the more electronegative you are. Do you got it now? As you get closer to fluorine, the more electron negative you are. So, if we have to, like, okay, what's next to fluorine? Oxygen, right? Then nitrogen, then carbon and bromine. Or boron. We have chlorine, bromine, and iodine, right? So that's generally our uh, periodic table. Now, so all of, all of the atoms here that are non metals, they're highly electron negative. So, if we have O2, what's going to happen? This oxygen is going to pull on which electron? Which electrons? This one. And this oxygen is going to pull on which electrons? This one. So what's going to happen is, he's going to take this one and it's going to go here. Does that make sense? But then, when this electron comes back, he can pull back on it. And so it goes like this. And what happens eventually? They share electrons. So covalent bonding is what? Sharing electrons. Sharing electrons. Does that make sense? You guys got it? Shaz, you got it? I got it, bro. 
You got it? I got it. I don't know, do you think I got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the sharing dog comes. Is this strong or weak? Strong. Strong, why? Because if another one comes, they throw income, even though he's stronger. They're bound to each other, they're sharing it. He can't just like jump, uh, jump out and go to four ring. Does that make sense? So most bonds that you think of, your skin, your bones, you, all those things, it's all covalent bonds, okay? So this is strong. So what is it going to have automatically? High melting point um, and high boiling point, automatic, right? Now, here's the thing. This is where polarity also comes into play. Do you know polarity? No. Okay, because this is going to go into interpolated forces later. Okay, do you think they always share equally? Do you think it's always equally shared? No. Who will win? For example, let's say I have carbon and oxygen, carbon monoxide. Okay, is this shared equally? Will they share the electron equally? No. Who's going to win, carbon or oxygen? Oxygen. Oxygen, why? Because it's electronegative. Good, it's more electronegative. So, when they form a bond, then this is going to be slightly negative and this is going to be slightly positive. And this, so this is a bipolar. Is this bipolar? No. no. This okay, is, that's one. Because it's one. So this is neutral. Got it? Or dipole. What else? Okay, let's go to metallic. So is this good? Yeah. Oh, and uh, this occurs between non-metal and non-metal, right? How do you know which one is more Okay, how do you know which one is more electric? Okay. Metal or non-metal? So look. If you look at your periodic table, mm -hmm. okay, fluorine is the most electronegative. Mm -hmm. The closer you are to fluorine, the more electronegative you are. So, it goes fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, right? And it goes chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So, which one's more electronegative, oxygen or nitrogen? Yeah. Oxygen, why? Because it's closer to fluorine. Which one's more electro uh, electronegative, chlorine or iodine? Chlorine, so that's how you know. But there's also numbers for them as well, okay? Alright, now metallic. Metallic is a transition metal. What's a transition metal? Huh? Yeah, transition metal is when you really think of metal. Gold, platinum, silver, aluminum, uh, all those are transition metals. Does that make sense? So, transition metals are organized much more differently than these. Okay, this is how transition metals are organized. Let's take iron for example. Okay, iron So we have the nucleus spread evenly apart. Cool? Now, they have their own electrons, but they also have something called free electrons. What are free electrons? Free electrons are electrons that are shared by everyone. They're not, they don't belong to anyone. Do you see that? Now, how many free electrons are there? Well, the way it's described, they describe it like a sea of electrons. So there is a lot of free electrons. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, metal, do they conduct electricity well or not? Yeah. When you think of metal, good, good electrical conductors or bad? Mm -hmm. Good. Copper wires, right? All the wires you think of are always metal. Why? Because what if, I put a, what if I put a positive charge here? If I put a positive charge here, what's going to happen to all the electrons? Zoom. They're going to go that way. What is electricity? Electricity is just a movement of electrons. You got it? And so that's why they're uh, high conductivity. Uh, they're very malleable. Now, what's an alloy? You ever heard of alloys? Oh, yeah. It's an alloy. Good, it's a mix. So an alloy is, instead of having pure uh, iron, I replace it. So I take this, and instead of iron, I put aluminum. See that? Mm -hmm. So an alloy is a mix of two metals. This is how you make steel, uh, some of the other metals that you're used to that's not on the periodic table. Now, there's two types of uh, alloys. The one I just showed you was substitutional. What is substitutional? Or substitution alloy? is when you actually replace one of the atoms with the other one. Now, the other one, uh, the, other, the other type of alloy is interstitial. Interstitial is, let's go back to the original. So say for example you have iron, and you have iron here, right? 
interstitial is when you place it in between the atoms. You understand? So that's two types of values. Is there anything else? Is that it? Up here, Richard. What's that? Wait, is it just transition metal? This is only transition metals, yes. How was that lesson, guys? Oh, wait, you're going to do naming? Never mind. <laughs> you're going to do naming? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We'll do the interview a little bit, Alright. <laughs> yeah, that Okay, how do you name it, okay? You guys got this, right? I'm going to erase uh, some of this one. Is it one Carbon 
dog sign. And how would you say this one? Dicarbon. Dicarbon trials. Easy? Yeah. Now, so that's uh, pretty simple. Okay, now, let's go with metallic. How do you mean metallic? Metallic is pretty much the same thing as ionic, but one small difference. One small difference. Um, let's talk about iron real quick. Let's take a look at iron. What is the valence electron of iron? Plus two, plus three. It's multiple. Yeah. Can you look at this and, and tell me how many bit, uh, what's the charge on it? No. Sodium always has one charge. Plus one. So it's, always, it's pretty easy, right? But when we come to the transition metals, it can either be Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus. So when we name it, we have to write down what the charge is in Roman numerals. Does that make sense? So this is going to be iron 2. And this is going to be iron 3. So, for example, if I have FeO, how am I going to name this? Iron 3. Oh, sorry, iron 3. Two. Two. Oh, iron 2. Iron 2. Iron 2. Because this is minus 2, this is plus 2. So you'd say this iron 2 oxide. Now, what if it's like this? Iron 3. Because this is minus 2, this is plus 3. Oh, sorry, it's like this. 2 is equal 3. So this is going to be iron. So whenever you have a transition metal, it should have a Roman numeral. Good. What do you got? Um, wait, wait, did the 3 say the charge? Yeah, 3 is the charge. Oh, iron. Yeah. And it it's always positive. It's like iron 2 oxide. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you know when you, uh, how do you know, like, just real quick. If you ever get, ever get confused with this ionic bond, covalent bond thing, just remember, this is a plus and minus, right? So what kind of bond is this? Uh, ionic. Uh, this is minus and minus. So what kind of ion bond is this? Covalent. Covalent. And this is plus and minus as well, but it's a transition metal. So it's going to be a metallic. Uh, Got it? That's good. Wait, why, um, I think, why is it Fe2 and O3? Because that's the balance of charges. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the Alright, y'all, how was that lesson? Yo, how you guys learn? I'll give it a thumbs up. All right, at least we give it a thumbs up. We the study spot, and we out. Wow.